It's seven o'clock, so let's get started. Um, welcome to the April 13th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Could we please have the, actually, is it acceptable since we can see all of each other here to do the roll call? I mean, to not do the roll call or do we need to do that procedurally each time? I, I think it may be best procedurally to be compliant with the uh, uh, same as we do on roll call votes as well. So just uh, for the record. Okay, so let's please have the roll call. Chairman Adams? Here. Councilor Devereaux? Here. Councilor Gabrielson? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Straw? Here. Madam Chairman, you have your quorum. Thank you. Um, and I believe Deb has a flag for us so that we can all say the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. okay. We all get stand up. <laughs> all right. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice. justice. Okay. Um, any town council reports or correspondence at this time? I, oh, I do. I do. Oh, I got a different button where I can raise my hand. Um, I just want to let people know that the ordinance committee are around short-term rentals is going to be on Thursday night at 6.30 uh, via um, the uh, virtual meeting mode. Um, and um, hopefully at that meeting, we'll be able to do a run through of the full ordinance identifying um, any changes, but uh, we're, we're getting closer. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Um, anyone else? No? Um, Matt, do you have any any updates on um, outside of the manager's report? Any updates that you wanted to give on COVID nineteen things? No, not not this time, Madam Chair. Thanks. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the finance committee report. Thank you, Chairman Adams. Um, so. Uh, last Wednesday and Thursday, the Town Council's Finance Committee, which is Committee of the Whole Council, met to review the revised uh, Fiscal 21 uh, budget recommendations from the manager, as well as all of the uh, uh, department heads. Uh, there was good discussion had in both uh, evenings meetings and direction provided back to the manager and uh, department heads. So I expect that um, though we haven't talked about um, specifics around uh, when we'll see any update, um, we have our public hearing uh, for the budget coming up on Monday, May 4th. I certainly expect it'll be um, ahead of that, uh, that we'll see those revisions. Uh, elsewhere in the budget schedule and cycle, on Monday the 27th, uh, the town council will meet in joint workshop with the school board to receive the school board's recommendation on their uh, budget for the next fiscal year. Uh, we'll have uh, a review of the, the plan that they're putting forward as well as opportunity for discussion um, back and forth. Uh, we do have still set aside on the 28th, Tuesday the 28th, um, a placeholder on the calendar should we need it for either additional conversation specifically around the school budget or uh, any further discussion or um, uh, input relative to the municipal budget. Uh, as I mentioned on May 4th, um, we will uh, have the public hearing, uh, which we'll do virtually probably, though not 100% certain, but in all likelihood. Um, and then uh, the following Monday uh, from that, on, uh, what is that, the uh, 13th? 13th. Uh, will be, I'm sorry, the 11th, May 11th, right? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah, May 11th sorry. is um, 
the town council's vote on the fiscal 21 municipal budget and adoption of uh, the budget figure to be put forward to the voters uh, for referendum approval. So that's just a recap of things from the finance committee and um, specifically around uh, budget planning um, and upcoming activities. Um, so also in the packet tonight is uh, the usual financial dashboard. Um, I'm actually gonna um, kick it over to Matt uh, just to speak a little bit while things are pretty, um, uh, you know, most of the line items that we're reporting on are, are uh, fairly favorable still. I know that in the last four to six weeks, uh, there's been, you know, a dramatic turn specifically on the revenue side. So Matt, I don't know if you wanna just briefly address uh, what we're seeing uh, seeing there and, and anticipated impact. Yes, sir, I, I'd be happy to, thank you. Uh, what we did notice, I, I anticipated actually a bigger hit last month on our, on our excise tax revenues, but I think due to the ability to uh, renew online, uh, that has been a, a, a bit of a help for, for residents in order to renew their excise. So uh, we did, and we, we're close to, uh, we, are, we are ahead of where we were at this point last year. So I was encouraged to see that. Uh, we are at 1.76 uh, million in excise revenues versus 1.71 where we were at at this time last year. And then speaking with John Q uh, regarding our, our property tax revenues, as those came in, we tracked actually greater than we did last year at this point in time. So uh, we're, we're healthy when it comes to that. Uh, as you'll notice, majority of our revenues are up still in comparison to where we were uh, at this point last year, uh, minus uh, uh, sewer fees. But uh, I think that reconciles due to the recording that we do uh, get throughout the year. Uh, but we are tracking fairly decently. I, I think what we will see is this month, uh, we'll have to keep a closer eye as to what our revenue and where our revenues are at. Uh, however, in other areas, we have been uh, finding some savings in, in overtime uh, that, that we haven't had to expend in other areas uh, across different departments. Uh, but we do have a, a good watch on, to, on all different elements where we are for the budget, but we are in decent shape uh, at this point uh, for the year. Uh, but we are looking forward to uh, getting through this crisis to say the least and, and getting back to, to what we uh, to you know, to where we should be, but uh, we're in for some rough sledding, I think, overall uh, across across multiple areas. But uh, but at this point, we are decent in comparison to last year. Great, thanks, Matt. And yeah, I, I mean, I think it speaks to some of the cushion we had built up and being you know pacing in some cases well ahead of forecast. Yes. Um, for some of our budget areas, um, so as we come into what's now the final quarter of the financial year, um, you know, in some cases. Uh, at the three quarter poll, we'd already hit or exceeded um, forecast projections. So that's a good news story. As, as Matt indicated, the next three months, we, I think we can expect, um, you know, uh, pretty significant change. Um, uh, one thing I wanna remind citizens of is the decision that the council took a couple of weeks ago to um, uh, uh, forestall uh, any interest and or other penalty fees on property taxes that were due in April. Uh, so uh, if you uh, are in a financial hardship situation and it helps to either delay your tax payment or make partial payment um, between now and June 1st, uh, there is no penalty or interest that will be charged on those taxes um, as a result of that late payment. So. Hopefully that's of help to some people who um, during this emergency situation uh, might be experiencing um, some difficulty with cash flow or, or income uh, streams and things like that. Um, so uh, with that, uh, any questions from anybody on either the dashboard or um, things related to the um, budget review and budget planning? I have a question. Um, this is Penny. Um, the fact that the uh, state has, uh, the governor has said that um, people really don't need to renew their registrations um, until after the um, emergency order is done or over, uh, what impact is that potentially going to have on excise tax? That's, that's what we're watching. 
And I think we'll have a better feel this month after we get through the month of April uh, than we will, uh, than we did at the end of last month. Uh, so that was the area that I was surprised actually that we were tracking greater than we were at this point last year. But I do think a lot of people do avail themselves of the online renewal. It's the new reg uh, that, that we're working on. Uh, we may try to find a way to do that via correspondence if people would like to do that. However, uh, right now the governor through her executive order had extended that window. So if people do need to do it, uh, then they, can, they do have some relief there because across the state we're different, you know, um, many towns don't, don't have even the staffing open that, that we're doing uh, by processing in-house with our staffing that we do have during the week. So uh, they're, they're quite busy while they are here processing what we do receive. And, uh, but we're gonna try to find a way to do that via correspondence as well. Okay. And Matt, I assume that, um, you know, we're, uh, there's been, what, even though they're the, one of the only people advertising on television any longer, I assume there's been a big drop off in new vehicle purchases that are usually a higher ticket um, on the transaction, obviously, uh, as far as excise taxes goes versus renewals. And then other things like, you know, boats, RVs, uh, other associated, um, you know, vehicle uh, excise taxes that we take in. And then also real estate transfers, I imagine, are pretty slow right now and any associated revenues that we see from that, so. Yeah, the, uh, if, if, I, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, just, just looking at this, uh, on the, a lot of the boat regs are, are there, but yeah, new cars are a challenge because uh, automobile sales wasn't considered an essential service uh, by the governor's proclamation. Uh, the repair orders are, uh, you know, you can still go and get your uh, automobile serviced at a dealership, but I believe uh, a lot of the four, the outward facing uh, auto sales side of that has uh, been effectively shuttered. And then we did talk a little bit during the budget meeting the other day about the impact, for example, on some of our fee supported services like uh, community services uh, and so on. And, and with programming suspended, in most cases, we're, you know, we're not collecting any revenues there, so. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, other questions, comments on financial matters, Jeremy? Um, only related to financial matters and as much as it relates to the budget adoption pro process. Um, I saw the governor ordered the primaries to move back to July 15th. Is there been any guidance from the governor's office uh, about whether or not municipalities will be able to move their budget adoption elections back in, in lockstep with that? Or is that a limitation on the town side? If, if, I, if I may, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, as far as direction from the, the executive at the governor's office, we have not received that yet. I, I anticipate that towns will probably receive uh, some direction from Maine Municipal in the, in the near term. Uh, as far as the municipal budget approval process, you, uh, the council is still on track for the town side of the ledger, it's the school side that is the challenge because the budget, and that's where we're gonna need some guidance as far as budget adoption because the way, our, the, way the town's charter reads, we have a specific window that exists uh, that the, the town needs to vote on. So we need to find out if they're going to expand that ability for towns, say, and you know, um, as far as where you have a situation where a council needs to approve a school budget but then it needs to be adopted by, uh, by the legislative uh, caveat, if you will, uh, at a certain date later, we, we're still waiting to get some clarification as to what the proper steps will be there. But the town side of it will, will continue as the normal sequence of events uh, as, as you normally have. So at least a, a portion of that will move forward. And then there are provisions in the state law regarding uh, say when, when the school budget isn't approved, that they can go back to you know adopting what was the pr the previously approved budget, and I think we'll probably find that in some of their uh, in some of their language uh, as far as how they want to operate the first couple of weeks of, of July at least before the referendum process is approved. Okay. But we Thank have to reconcile it with our charter, so we'll we'll find how that how that goes here shortly. I hope. Okay. Thank you. Any other finance committee questions? Finance report questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. Um, okay, so this is the time when we open up for discussion. Um, any citizen comment on items not on this evening's agenda? 
there will be an opportunity to speak to items on the agenda, but if anyone listening or watching this evening would like to comment on something not on the agenda, this is your opportunity. Um, we do ask that you please limit your comments to three minutes and you identify yourself by name and address or affiliation. Um, and you can do so in this format by using the raise hand feature, whether you're on the phone or computer. Okay, seeing no one, um, we will move on to the manager's monthly report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have been meeting fairly regularly and uh, uh, throughout, throughout the past uh, four weeks. Uh, so I have a very brief uh, report this evening. Uh, the one item that I wanted to follow up with on the council is that we are looking uh, to establish uh, through the community services uh, operation here, uh, we are looking to start opening a phone, uh, almost like a concierge service where folks, if they have questions, uh, they can, they'll be able to call in. So we're in the process of setting that up. Uh, if people need assistance or uh, resources available, uh, we, we're going to look to open that phone line up, uh, hopefully by, you know, hopefully this week, if not the start of next week, in order to provide that as a service to residents uh, so we can try to assist them as they go through this process. But uh, that's pretty much the only update I have at, at this point in time. And we are putting updates as they come uh, onto the town's website in response to the COVID-19 uh, situation. But uh, we appreciate, quite frankly, I know uh, I appreciate all the work that our staff is doing, but we also appreciate the patients and the, the good people of Cape Elizabeth and, and how they've been uh, doing very, you know, trying to do their best in some extremely challenging situations. So we are trying to find different ways to help. And uh, as we get information, we will be pushing that out and we'll have a new resource available shortly. Great, thank you. Thank um, you. Does anyone have any questions for Matt? No, okay. Um, next item on the agenda is review of draft minutes. We do have two sets of minutes to approve this evening. Those are from the March 9th, uh, 2020 meeting and also the March 25th virtual special meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those draft minutes? Uh, Councillor Devereaux and uh, Councillor Garvin, is that a second? Yes. Thank you. Um, any discussion on the minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes? Um, I, well, I guess we have to do the, the call. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Penny, did you have a, a comment or were you just raising your hand for a... Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Um, to clarify for those who are in attendance on this item this evening, um, this is specifically on the Ordinance Committee's recommendation that a moratorium be placed on short-term rental permits. So that would be a moratorium on new short-term rental permits. Um, this is not the ultimate hearing on the actual short-term rental ordinance uh, as that is still being crafted. But um, at this point, we open the public hearing on the moratorium issue. Uh, there are a couple documents that were also provided in the agenda this evening um, about a moratorium and the ordinance committee memo recommending that ordinance. So um, we'll open the public hearing. Um, please do limit your comments if possible to three minutes per person to allow everyone an opportunity to speak. Um, and please identify yourself by name and address or affiliation. And again, you can do so by using the raise hand feature um, either on the phone or device. Not seeing any hands raised. Okay. So um, if there are no 
individuals wishing to speak at the public hearing. We will close the public hearing. The next item on the agenda, item 57-2020 is uh, the council's action on the ordinance committee recommendation to place a moratorium on the issuance of new short-term rental permits. So uh, we do also have an opportunity for public comment before this item, if anyone wishes to speak on it. Again, three minutes per person. Um, seeing no one. Okay, uh, do I have a motion from the council? Um, there are a number of different actions we can take, but given that the ordinance committee, yes, Penny. Um, I would make a motion that um, uh, the council that we adopt the moratorium banning uh, new short-term rental permits after June 1st, 2020, and that the uh, moratorium would run for 180 days from that point. A second that. Okay, um, discussion on the motion. Jamie, yes. Thank you. Um, just uh, on really just for the public's benefit and I see most of the attendees that are in the, the meeting here, I, I see familiar names that we've seen in our regular ordinance meetings, um, but for everybody else's benefit too. The, the point of this is, um, simply to curtail uh, the issuance of new permits. We're obviously still doing um, a whole bunch of ongoing work um, uh, around larger revisions, but uh, you know, just so everybody's clear, uh, this is on the issuance of any new permits. Uh, it does not affect um, renewals of existing permits uh, for people in good standing and so on. So um, just wanted to make sure that the public was clear on that. Thank you. Um, okay, and I, I just have a question for the ordinance committee, not intending to rush you in any way, but um, how much longer do you think the committee will need to bring a draft of the um, revisions to the council? I'm hoping that it will be uh, at the most two more meetings. Hopefully okay. we can do it at this next meeting, get it all cleaned up, but I don't want to overcommit. So um, I would say at the most it would be two. Okay. What do you guys think, Jamie and Chris? Chris, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's, um, it, that's a fair uh, estimate. I think it really turns on uh, the fact that there's a couple uh, very high level decisions as to uh, which way the, uh, the, the overall council end up going. Um, but absent the council fully weighing in on those, we're attempting to thread the needle um, in what's permitted and what's not permitted, uh, pun intended. And uh, that's uh, what's added a little bit of time as we're, we're trying to get that nuance into the draft ordinance. Okay. Um if there's no additional discussion on the motion, um, Deb, could you please call a vote? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Councilor Garvin? Can you hear me? Now we can. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, item number 58-2020, expressive vendor policy at Fort Williams Park. Um, the Fort Williams Park Committee has recommended that the expressive vendors at the park be moved uh, further north from the current location um, on the peninsula away from the corner and crosswalk. Um, so at this point, before we get into it, I'll open up this item for any public comment. 
um, from anyone in the audience this evening. Right. Um, seeing no one, um, do we have anyone from the committee? I see Jim Walsh. I don't know if there was an intention from the committee to sort of queue up this item for the council. I, I would I be happy to, Madam Chair, if that'd be helpful. And Kathy uh, Raftis is here as well. Oh, Kathy, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking in the attendees and not actually at the pictures. <laughs> That's okay. I would prefer to be there than here. So. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're bringing this forward, Madam Chair, uh, this evening. Uh, last year, uh, there were some improvements, as we, uh, as you all know, at the uh, at the park where we made a major a major infrastructure investment in the central parking lot. Uh, that was with the uh, construction of, of you know, sidewalks and curbing and installed the pavement and along those lines, uh, and then. Uh, so things have changed since the last time the policy was uh, renewed. Uh, there was an email that was sent uh, expressing that this is an ordinance and it needs to go through the ordinance committee. That uh, that would be uh, not correct. It's actually the Fort Williams Park has an expressive vendor policy. And part of the question is what is ex what are expressive vendors? And back in 2013, uh, the, it was brought before the council because there was uh, trying to figure out, okay, there are people who have what they call their First Amendment rights of expression and uh, you need to provide or allocate an area that they can uh, express their selves artistically in and that that would also folks also like to sell their expression uh, at the fort and the council uh, you know, worked on trying to find okay if we're going to allow this it was found by our, our own attorney's advice that you can allocate an area for that so uh, after looking at multiple sites it was decided that uh, that you can call it the peninsula or the island that goes along uh, the the central parking lot would be the area that was was the area that was chosen. Now, after the improvements were made, we found that uh, the way that it was set up versus how it was set up before they didn't quite work well together. And uh, what we're looking at tonight is to is to alter the policy. Uh, staff and myself, we had reviewed the area last year came back with a recommendation to the Fort Williams Park Committee so the Park Committee could see what we were looking at uh, to make a recommendation to move to. And uh, so they've have reviewed that and other optional places. And the recommendation is in, to change the policy to move up the peninsula a bit, kind of the other side. There's a big bush right at the uh, intersection of where the exit from central parking comes back onto the main road. Uh, we'd like to move the vendors on the other side of that bush and then I think the distance is still 110 feet from that point up in the green area and this would take folks off the point uh, where the pedestrian crossing is as well as uh, you know the cars trying to pull out would, wouldn't have to look past that person who, who sets up on a daily basis throughout the summer or most days throughout the summer on that point so uh, that's why we made the recommendation the committee looked at it and they came forward in agreement with that recommendation and that's why we brought it forward in front of the uh, council this evening for action since it is a council policy uh it need, that's why we're looking to have have you uh, endorse it thank you um okay kathy did you have anything to add to to that just by way of introduction no just that we brought it forth we brought forth three different areas that we could move the vendors to and among the group discussed it and voted to due to the fact that we're coming up with a master plan that may indeed change this going forward we chose to just move them a little bit up on that peninsula as matt described so that they're away from the crosswalk and off the sidewalk so that people can still see them can still utilize the vendors however not be right on the sidewalk and which impedes people walking back and forth um, so do I have a motion to approve the recommendation of the Fort Williams Park Committee to move expressive vendors at Fort Williams Park further north from the current location on the peninsula away from the corner and crosswalk? So moved. Thank you, Jeremy. And do I have a second? Valerie Devereaux? I second that. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion on this item? Yes, Jamie. Thank you. Um, I would just, uh, I, I don't have any objection to the request. 
Um, because this is a long recurring item though, um, I would ask that when the Fort Williams Park Committee and others working on the update to the master plan get underway with that work, um, that there be some substantial time and energy put towards um, coming up with a, a more permanent solution uh, that's both, uh, you know, takes into consideration the paramount need for safety, but also um, creates, I think, a, a more specific and, and dedicated space, if at all possible. So, agreed. Yeah. And that was that was discussed at the at the park uh, committee level as well, and. Uh, I think that'll be an element for sure on, in, in the in the park master planning. Um, Valerie, go ahead. I just wanted to um, follow up with what uh, Councillor Garvin just said. Um, Councillor Gabrielson and I were both at the uh, meeting. There was a lot of discussion on this. It really is a safety issue. And they did talk about um, going back and looking at, at that after they look at the master plan. I thought it was a very well thought out decision and it was a unanimous decision, um, six to zero. So I'm going to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Um, and I, oh, yes, go ahead, Chris. I, I was just gonna reiterate, it sounds like this is, isn't being driven. Uh, it sounds like in any way to curtail their speech. This is about the fact that we've had um, safety issues. I, I, I believe this was roughly around the area where the someone fell and broke their ankle. Um, so well, we've had actual uh, safety issues and this is really being driven by uh, dealing with the, the, the safety of having it at that particular location. And as everyone noted, this temporary until the overall uh, master plan hopefully addresses this in a very holistic way. Thanks. Yes, Matt, go ahead. If I could as well, uh, thank you, Councilor Straw for bringing up that, uh, the, that point as well. We are making the recommendation, but in no way uh, are we assigning blame to the vendors for causing the falls that took place at the at the park last year. But we are trying to find a way that can be safe for 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 visitors as well as those who are using the sidewalk, as well as the vendors. To be quite honest, uh, that's not you know where they've set up, and I know there may be differences of opinion when it comes to this, but I don't. It was our decision that we also felt that it wasn't the safest setup for, for the vendors to be exactly where they were, uh, where they might have more of a buffer from traffic and, uh, and other safety concerns down on the point. So, uh, but I just want to make sure we're, that we, you know, wasn't done to say, well, we're assigning blame to the vendors for the falls because there were way too many falls last summer. And that's a continued area where we're trying to find a solution to that uh, as well in the upcoming budget. Thanks. Yep. Chris, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so to clarify, yeah, I wasn't, uh, wasn't in any way implying that it was. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And I get that you weren't saying that either. It's the, the entire area has issues and this yeah. is part of that overall we're trying to. Yeah. So I wasn't in any way trying to um, point the finger at anyone there. So I apologize if it came across that way at all. No, I, the, 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 if I may, Madam Chair, uh, mm -hmm. th that wasn't the point I was taking either, Councilor Stroh. I just wanted to make sure uh, it had been raised in an email that the council had received and I wanted to just touch on it. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, um, all in favor of the motion. Uh, Deb, could you please call through? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion passes, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, item 59-2020. Um, opportunity for public comments on the fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, we did have a couple of workshops last week on this budget. Um, this is an opportunity for public comment on the budget. Again, you can comment by using the raise hand feature and please do identify yourself by name and address or affiliation and try to limit your comments to three minutes. Okay, so I see no one. Um, and we do also for anyone, you know, listening after the fact or watching after the fact, welcome comments by email 
um, at any time. So please feel free to reach out. Yes, uh, Jamie, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to remind folks too that um, we did record both Wednesday and Thursday's meetings. Um, we had not uh, in past years recorded budget workshops. We did this year um, as a function of it being a Zoom meeting. Um, it made it easier, but uh, that was the intent regardless. So if you didn't get a chance to participate in the meetings but are interested in the information, uh, you can go back and watch uh, both those in their entirety. Thank you. Um, okay, so we, oh, yes, Matt. Thank you, just one quick update. We have, uh, with John, made uh, some of the changes that were brought up as a result of both of the uh, public workshops on the budget. And uh, right now we're looking at a, a net to taxes of 2.33% increase on the municipal, the municipal side. So uh, there's, you know, the one other area that we're working on uh, that the council had uh, requested us to to work on when staff is uh, is working on a couple more of those elements and we'll be ready to report back to the council uh, by the start of next week. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, so item number 60-2020, appointment of election clerks and warden. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing no one, okay. Um, do I have a motion? And Penny, are you raising your hand with? Oh yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, I I um I need to recuse myself as a result of my sister's name being uh, identified as the warden. Um, I I don't I don't know if we want to vote on it separately because the other. Um, the, the clerks, uh, even though some of them may be distantly related, I think I could vote on, but um, my sister, I think I need to recuse myself. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and we can take these up separately. Um, so looking for a motion from the council to approve the recommendation of the town clerk for Carol Ann Jordan to serve as warden and James Walsh and Deborah Lane to serve as deputy wardens and until successors are sworn. Do I have, thank you, Chris. Um, Valerie, is that a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on this item? All in favor? Deb? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion passes, six yay, one recusal. Okay. And, and Penny, we can, you can join us again. Um, looking for a, a second motion. My apologies to Deb for now for breaking this into two. <laughs> um, looking for a motion to approve the list of residents um, outlined in the agenda who may be considered to serve as election clerks for the town of Cape Elizabeth for a period of two years and until successors are sworn. So moved. Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? Valerie Devereaux, I think, was seconded that one. Um, any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes, and thank you to all for their willingness to serve. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And yes, as, as Jamie said, thank you to everyone for your help with this. Um, it's, Definitely a commitment that we all appreciate. So item number 61-2020, consideration of compensation for first responders. Um, this is something that came up at one of our previous um, special meetings regarding the town's response to COVID-19 and whether we wanted to consider some sort of additional hazard pay um, for those who are being placed more at risk at this time. So 
Uh, is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? Seeing no one, um, I, I don't know if someone is prepared to make a motion. I'll just sort of intro this by saying that um, I did talk to Matt earlier. I had done a little bit of research on what other municipalities are doing and one fairly common action seemed to be increasing the pay of first responders for a set period of time by a set percentage that seemed to be 5% seemed to be average for a period of six to eight weeks. Um, so Matt and I had discussed uh, whether we could draw from the um, money budgeted for overtime to accomplish that. And I believe the answer was yes for uh, police, for public safety, or sorry, for um, public works and fire. So um, I, I'm not sure in what form that motion would take if we'd like to just, if anyone else had some other ideas that we'd like to discuss before entertaining a motion. Um, but that was, that was one thought that I had on how we could accomplish this just as a way to thank those individuals for putting themselves more at risk um, and also to compensate them for a hazard that they may not have contemplated previously. Uh, yes, Jamie and then Valerie. Um, I just have a question, curious if either of you in your discussions on this um, had any thoughts around or had seen any other information. This, this item is defined as first responders, which I take to be fire, police, and rescue. Um, I'm curious if there was any discussion around other, either what would be classified as sort of frontline employees or other essential workers, essential service providers. We did talk about public works as well. And the, uh, the that would include the recycling facility uh, as they've been, they've been steadfast and uh, right up there on the front lines since the day, since day one, as well as our yeah, public works uh, gentlemen as well. So that's included in this or, or not? Yeah, that, that, was, that was the intent. So I would, whenever we make a motion, then I would just recommend that we clarify the definition. First responders to me implies, like I said, police, fire, and rescue. Um, so if we want to say essential workers and first responders or, you know, other frontline employees, whatever, whatever that definition is. And I, th I think we should very carefully tailor the definition too. just, I know that there are other people within town that are still working and I, I wouldn't want to cause confusion without carefully defining who we're talking about here. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, if I may. I, I think Valerie Devereaux um, first, and then we'll come back to you. Um, my point was just that, our, did you discuss um, allowing people to take time off if they decided they didn't want the pay or the, um, the extra money each week or each for each hour? Would they be allowed to take time off, extra time off? Because I know that that way they don't pay taxes on it. Um, is, is that something you discussed also? Or would that be too difficult? We didn't discuss it, but I can see Matt um, raising his hand to comment. So go ahead. If I may, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, yes, we do have some staff uh, who have uh, ha have been out uh, because they may have compromised uh, health that, that would put them in a higher risk category. Uh, this would be applied to those who have been working uh, you know, all, all along. So uh, so the, the folks who would be out, we're, we're letting them take the time and we are compensating them. We've been tracking all of the hours that people have been out uh, specific for COVID-19. Uh, John has set up uh, a, set, a system with all of our different departments and we've been following that. So when eventually there will be federal reimbursement uh, that will be coming along. So we're, we're tracking it for those purposes as well as all expenses. So uh, we'll track this in a similar fashion, I believe. Uh, but for those who don't, uh, you know, may not, be able to avail themselves of it, they won't be penalized for uh, for not you know for not being here. So, if, if that's uh, that's about as well as I can put it, I guess. Okay. Uh, Jeremy. Um, I, to Jamie's point, I just um, when I, I I had raised this to Matt in, in an email a week or so ago, and, and my thought was was that this is really 
um, in addition to the, the monetary compensation, it really is intended as an expression of gratitude um, from the council for the people who don't have the luxury to do what I'm doing, which is staying at home during this, uh, during this pandemic and not exposing myself to the virus because of the nature of their work. Um, and, there's, and it really is an expression of gratitude for their service to the town. Thank you. Um, and Jeremy, were you also contemplating um, police, fire, rescue, and public works? I, I was, yeah, I, I think I had originally, I think the essential workers was the phrase that I had originally used, but um, I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, the language that Matt has put forward. Um, I think, I think essential workers is the language we've been using elsewhere in, in council and in, in state orders around this. So that, that might make more sense, but um, yeah. Um, Matt, if, if we were to say essential workers, who, would that go broader than police, fire, rescue, and public works? It could to a certain extent, but not, not a gi gigantic exposure, I, I don't believe. Uh, we have, you know, our tax office folks have been, uh, specifically our tax clerks have been coming in uh, consistently as well because uh, they helped us get through, you know, their, they were considered an essential worker uh, where, where it comes to it. So we have, you know, we have three, three staff members there that, uh, that I think you may want to include as well. Um, is there anyone else that may not be apparent to me? <laughs> um, I'm not sure I could, I, Deb, what would you think uh, if you don't mind me? putting the onus on you, if, if you have thoughts on that as well, if I'm missing. Um, Kathy has been coming in. Yeah, sorry, Kathy Maxwell Because well. of elections and stuff and vital records, those are considered um, essential or have been in those definitions. Yeah, yeah, th those are most, you know, th we're talking about mostly hourly, uh, our hourly staff who have been coming right. in. Yeah, and I don't know, AC, if it extends to and Janet, yeah, Janet Moran as well, as Janet Staples as well. Okay. So I guess I'd be looking for a, a clearly defined motion um, on compensation. Yes, Matt. I, I think the essential essential uh, services employees would be would probably be the best definition we could use. That would, okay. I think that would capture the most, and then we, we could apply it as we've seen uh, who, who, we, who we have in there. But the majority, 90, 95% of those would be fire, uh, you know, the public safety and public works employees. Yeah, I don't, I just, I was thinking, you know, I don't want to go so narrow that we're forgetting someone who is coming in and is overlooked. Um, Jamie, go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah, at first I was going to say something to the effect of, you know, essential employees who are still having to engage um, in person with the public in some form. But if that only leaves out like two or three people, or so, that, that seems peculiar to me too. So I, I, I agree with Councillor Adams about not wanting to inadvertently exclude anybody, but I also am sensitive to not you know, not for, you know, not narrowly defining it so that two or three people are excluded who, who may be making more of a sacrifice than I realize. So. Okay. Um, Matt, what was your phrase again? Uh, essential services employees. Okay. Um, Jeremy, were you about to? I, I can take a stab at it unless somebody has a, another comment. I don't see anyone. I saw you leaning forward, so I wasn't sure. I, 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 was, I was fiddling with the mute, unmute button. Um, but um, yeah, I, I would uh, move that the council approve a 5% um, hazard pay bonus for a period of eight weeks um, that would apply to what was the phrase you just used, Matt? Essential. 
service municipal essential, essential services, services employees. employees. Great. Um, do I have a second for Jeremy's motion? Penny? I think that Penny was a second. Um, so all right, a any, any additional discussion on this motion before we call a vote? Uh, yes, Chris. I'll, um, I'll just say, just so you guys know ahead of time, I'm gonna vote no. Um, we've avoided furloughing anyone. Um, there's a lot of people in town, myself included. My business has been wiped out. I have no income coming in. Fortunately, my wife has a salary job, but my, my business, which was a successful business from my perspective, has basically evaporated because of this. I'm not alone. There's a lot of people in town. It's gonna to be a really rough situation if this keeps going on. So although I greatly appreciate uh, all the various first responders and the people that are being exposed each and every day, um, we're gonna be in a bad, we being the town and the residents of the town, we're gonna to be in a bad spot financially. Um, and we just need to take that into account. And I'd love to be able to be getting a salary right now, but I'm not, that's it. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Nope. Seeing no one. Uh, yeah, oh, Jamie, go ahead. Um, Matt, I, I do have a question um, about, and, and you might not have an answer right now, I, I am curious about um, non-essential business employees. At, at what point do you think we're going to need to have a conversation um, about uh, whether it's on the, the municipal side or the school side for that matter, um, whether or not those people would need to be furloughed or their jobs you know, temporarily put on hold or something like that. Um, I'm trying to say this as delicately as possible. And I, you know, as, um, you know, someone to, who's had a, uh, you know, in, in the past couple of months, been negatively impacted um, at a previous employer. Um, but at the same time, you, you know, if we have people that uh, try as they might, aren't able to perform the function of their job remotely or are not doing so in their front line, typical frontline position, I'm just curious that, at what point does the town have to make a decision about how, how to carry forward? If I may, Madam Chair, uh, at the end of the month, quite frankly, I think that's what we're looking at. And when the governor comes forward with, uh, you know, if, 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 Jan, if Governor Mills comes forward with another extension, uh, I think we're looking at at least some areas that will, you know, if, if we need to maintain these current paradigm that we're operating under, uh, we are probably looking at the end of April is when we'll have to make some decisions when it comes to that. Uh, what you probably noticed, uh, Westbrook uh, took some actions over the weekend uh, with some staff that they have there. Obviously, they have a much larger operation and uh, they've been impacted pretty heavily. Uh, but I think at the end of the month is when we're going to have to look at that, uh, where we're going to be. Uh, you know, if, if the governor comes forward with an extended uh, extended stay at home order. Again, uh, we're looking at that. I know uh, Kathy and I were discussing uh, as recently as today, you know, what our plans are going to be. I know the council, or actually, I don't know if the council received the email, but we received an email uh, looking to have a decision, you know, not so uh, lightly taken when it comes to operation of summer camp this summer, for instance. So that's a very live uh, area that we're discussing uh, operationally and uh, how, uh, the governor's orders may may impact that and as well as impacting our residents so but as far as looking at uh some areas that we may have to consider furloughing uh we're probably looking at them at the end of april and i think we'll probably receive guidance from the governor here uh as we get closer to that date as to what uh the next next phase of planning will be thanks matt penny go ahead penny um, Matt, if, um, if we are anticipating that something could happen that extends, will the, uh, your plan that you think about at the end of April be 
in a position to be presented at that point in time to the council? Yes. Yeah. That okay. Would, that awesome. would, yeah, we'd probably, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, I'd probably work through the chair to schedule an additional uh, ad hoc meeting for the council uh, to, to update you as to where we are and uh, what the plan will be going forward for the next month. Because as we're sitting now, uh, you know, we're looking at our at following the state's orders to go through the month of month of April, uh, and you know, hopefully trying to come back with some form of uh, customer service at the start of May. But as as we all know, things change, uh, and then we'll have to figure out. You know, Debbie and I have talked about if you know people need to come in to do transactions at the town office. How many people do we allow in at a time? Similar to going to Hannaford's or Shaw's right now, or any store for that matter, you notice they have the social distancing spaces all set out. Are we going to have, you know, thinking about absentee voters coming in to vote during the uh, during the month of June, possibly for an, for a July election? Are we going to have tape marks wrapping around the backside of the building where people need to socially distance six feet to to queue up to come in to to process their absentee ballots? So uh, those are all things that we're going to have to look at to make function within the town hall. Uh, we may use the council chambers as an area uh, for staging for people to wait to come in to do the transaction at the at the clerk's office, for instance. So, those are some really live discussions that we have uh, and they, that we are considering right now, uh, operationally. So, uh, a lot of things are there's a heck of a lot of weight over the next two and a half weeks, quite frankly, to get to the end of April and to where, uh, you know, what guidance we receive. As as we all see on a daily basis, this changes and we're not getting the same message. Uh, from different levels of government so we're trying to make make uh, lemonade as best as we can often and use our best judgment with some good informed uh, medicine uh, medical advice that, that's coming down so um jeremy i saw your actual hand and then yeah. virtual hand so we'll do jeremy and then jamie um without wanting to um veer too far from the motion under consideration um i'd appreciate potentially going ahead and just scheduling a meeting of the council at the end of the month, because regardless of what happens with the governor's order, we also have the, um, the Fort Williams closure, which is due to expire at the end of the month. Um, and that may or may not be an appropriate decision to make at that time. I, I don't know that I have the ability to foresee that from here. Um, so it may be worth just scheduling something. Jamie. Matt, um, if I could direct the question to you, have, have any um, members of staff or through um, perhaps union representation for represented uh, employees um, come to you with any request for this or um, expressed any concerns uh, about their jobs continuing to place them on the front lines? I know uh, we've had a couple of discussions with department heads, but uh, no specific staff members have, have come forward. I had... Uh, one uh, gentleman in, in one of our frontline uh, essential services discussed some of his concerns with, uh, you know, as far as trying to have a safe environment, but uh, we've been working with his department head to, to get to find the right answers as well and to explain the, pro, you know, the, the steps and the, the best practices that we're trying to uh, follow as an organization. And I think, uh, you know, I think we've we've met his concerns, and we have others who have just quite frankly been out because they're they're worried about about their safety uh, where they do interact. So we've worked with them on a case by case basis as well. So people that are calling out or that have called out that have called out, yeah. And uh, we've, I've been in contact with our uh, attorney as well as to trying to you know reconcile that to the to the CARES Act and. Uh, the way that the legislation has come forward on that, if people do want to take time off uh, for, for those concerns. And I, I think you guys said you'd looked at other towns, but would, would, are there, I, I, don't, I don't remember if either you or you, Chair Adams, said which towns had, had taken steps like this? Yeah, I didn't see others in Maine, um, but nationally there were a number of towns that had taken this action. And I've, I've seen that also reported on uh, the ICM, like my uh, ICMA website uh, mm -hmm. or newsletters that have come forward. They've talked about that with uh, specifically with the law, your frontline employees who have no choice but to, but to come in and respond. Mm -hmm. 
Um, um, last question, sorry, well, um, is um, uh, what the, so the idea is to pay for this out of the overtime budget that we're favorable on right now. Are you, are you thinking that it would be fully net neutral or close or? Yes, yes, I think we have, uh, we've had considerable savings on both those lines uh, or on those lines uh, across the operation. So it should, would be net neutral. Okay. Um, yes, Valerie Devereaux. Um, the motion was for eight weeks. I'm curious if that's retroactive or if it's eight weeks starting today, how, how are we looking at that? Um, Jeremy, since it was your motion, do you have- Yeah, it's a good question. I, I w had been thinking retroactively, and now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm realizing the hassle of going back retroactively through payroll. Um, so I would, um, I would propose that we do it effective now, <laughs> but in recognition of the fact that there's likely going to be an eight week exposure period at the least. Yes. If, if I may through the chair, uh, we could, that would be a heck of a lot easier on our payroll folks. I guess <laughs> the, the, the quickest way I could answer that question if we started with the next pay period as this uh, Friday is, is one. So to make that change on the current one would be, uh, would be challenging, but uh, to start uh, towards the next pay period, that would be uh, an easy way to integrate that. And that would get us, uh, we could go forward through those eight weeks. So that would be most of, uh, that would be the last two weeks of April, uh, four weeks of May and the first half of June. Jamie? Um, Matt, without necessarily citing a specific comparative example, you said there's a number of discussions ongoing on ICMA um, message boards and, and listservs and stuff like that. Would you, would it be your opinion that there are similar or peer communities that have taken such steps or in the places where, where you've seen these steps being taken, would you classify them as much higher risk than our community? Similar and then some are much higher risk. I think you're looking at uh, some of your larger urban environments as well, uh, but some similar similar communities as well. Um, I actually just pulled up one of the lists I had been looking at earlier to see if I had any more for that. Um, so, I did see, and I don't know if anyone else was, saw this also, that um, in Maine, there was an extra between three to five dollars per hour hazard pay increase for certain employees um, represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees Council 93, which included corrections officers and mental health workers. So there was that statewide. Um, a number of the other ones are not cities that I'm entirely familiar with, um, but Donna, Texas, Clarksdale, uh, Mississippi. Um, there were a couple counties in Georgia that implemented this sort of thing for the entire county. Um, and then there were a couple of other larger cities like Atlanta. So, um, can't answer it fully, but Seems to be a spectrum. Okay. Um, anyone else before we call a vote? All right, Deb, go ahead, please. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Councilor Garvin? No. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? No. Councilor Penelope Jordan? No. Councilor Straw? No. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion fails three, four, three to four. Thank you, Deb. 
Um, and Matt, um, I do think we should we should flag a, one of those dates maybe that, excuse me, we already have scheduled if we could add on a meeting or just another day entirely to discuss moving forward um, our response as a town. Perfect. Yes, uh, I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll come back with some uh, recommended dates tomorrow if that would be, if that would work. Great. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Okay. So moving on to the next item, item 62-2020, acceptance of police department grant. Um, Matt, did you have any, did you want to cue this up or should I just go sure. ahead? No, I'd be happy to. As, as you know, uh, whenever a grant has been uh, received uh, by the town, it, uh, it's critical that uh, one of the rules of the council is to accept gifts on behalf of the town. So uh, that's why this has been brought forward this evening. Uh, this is to, uh, to receive the, the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant uh, for patrol, block, ballistic, shield, and training. And uh, Pretty much as straightforward as what the uh, what the agenda says, but we're looking for council action this evening to to accept the police department grant. Okay. Um, anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item before we move forward? Seeing no one, um, do I have a motion from the council to accept and appropriate a seven hundred twenty dollar grant from the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant? which is overseen by the Wyndham Police Department for a grant period of January 1, 2020 to September 30, 2021. Um, Councillor Garvin and Councillor Kemmerer, is that a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on this item? Seeing no one, um, we'll call the vote please, Deb. All in favor? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? <laughs> yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Honey, do you have your hand up for? Yes, I, I, I had it up for the previous item, but not for this one. So whenever I can go back just a little bit, let me know. This is a good point because the next, the next cool. item is adjourning for executive session. Um, I just wanted to say on that last item that um, that wasn't an easy decision to make to say no and i need to just um uh, ask because if i was a person on the other side of this whole thing if i an employee where i saw that the leadership of the town voted against um and it it was against an an increase or against compensation um, I would read that as it isn't demonstrating recognition of the risks I'm taking. And so this is a really, really key human resource um, challenge because I truly believe that the people who are there on the front lines, I respect what they're doing every, every single day. Um, and I know there's a lot of other people out there uh, who are putting themselves on, on there every single day. So somehow we need to say to people, it's not a reflection that we don't value what, what they're doing. To me, it's a, um, I'm going back to what Chris said. There are, man, there are many people out there who are, um, being impacted financially. And we as a town need to really start addressing those types of things because we're going to have people who are going to be impacted by taxes and expenses and registering cars and all of those things. And so that's why it was a very difficult decision for me to say no. 
um, because I respect what people are doing every single day. So I don't know how to message that to people, but I know that it can be taken somewhat negatively. Thank you. Chris, did you have something? Uh, so uh, just, uh, I would agree with everything that Penny said in, I guess a key aspect for me is that it's a, for, for me, it's a choice of, I don't want to be furloughed. It, it's, it's, it's more say, saying that to the extent we have limited resources and if we begin to divert in that direction, I want to avoid as long as possible furloughing and laying off our town employees. And if we begin to divert resources in one way, yes, there's a thousand different little tiny streams where, this, where the, the town fist goes, uh, but one way to look at it is that all of the town employees, they're, they're in it together with their coworkers and to the extent that we begin diverting resources to some, it may expedite the speed that others end up with nothing. Um, so that, that's all I have to say. Okay. Yes, Matt. Madam Chair, if, if, I, if I may, uh, the fact that the council had the conversation is, I think it's a good message. You know, it may not have prevailed as a vote, but the fact that you considered that uh, in very uncertain times is the way I would look at that as saying the council, you know, you, you're making the best decision that you can based on the information that you have uh, that we all get on a daily basis. And the fact that you considered it and uh, you had that conversation, I would say is, is a vote of support. It may not have been a prevailing vote as far as the, the math went, but the fact that the council had a thoughtful conversation about it, I would take as a positive. So uh, maybe because we're all this close to the situation right now, I would look at that, uh, you know, I would bookmark that for future for a future future time. But I, I don't take that as a negative. I take it as a positive. And maybe that's just how I'm wired. But uh, you, you all know me pretty well. And I think the I think the staff would at least appreciate the conversation. And I think the comments made by uh, by council uh, are, were heartfelt. So uh, I'm grateful for the conversation that you did have. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on to the last item on the agenda, item 63-2020, um, we will review an executive session. So looking for a motion from the council to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRS section 405 sub 6 F to consider two requests for hardship tax abatements. So moved. Thank you, Jeremy. Is that a second, Jamie? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, all in favor or any discussion? All in favor? Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Garvin? Yes. Councillor, excuse me, Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And so, uh, yes, Matt. Madam Chair, what I'll do is I will uh, I will close this meeting down, and then I'll reopen the one that uh, that I had sent uh, all the links for to, to the council in in a short uh, moment. Okay, and then I, I think we do need to re-enter this meeting after to adjourn, just in case there are any attendees. So, um, we plan to do that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so do I have a motion to leave executive session? 
So moved. Thank you, Jeremy. Is there a second? Second, Penny. Thank you, Penny. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Garvin? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, okay, so the next motion we'd be looking for is a motion to approve um, funds for a hardship tax abatement in the amount of $1,666.89. So moved. Thank you, Penny. Your second? Second. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Garvin? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so I don't see anyone in attendance. I'm assuming there's no citizen comment on anything not on the agenda. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting? So moved. Looks like Penny followed by Jeremy. Any discussion? All in favor? Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Garvin? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. And Chairman Adams? Yes. Oh, thanks everyone and thank you Deb for all of your name. <laughs> name calling? <laughs> <Thanks for all. laughs> You're welcome. Night. Thank all you right. all. Take care. Bye. Have a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night.